For today's video, we'll be talking about how to find a derivative, what is a derivative, and what are the rules for a derivative. The definition of a derivative is a function that tells the slope of the line tangent to the curve of at any point. It gives the instantaneous rate of change at any point. And so we will be looking at that when we get uh, closer to how to find and what are some examples. When finding the derivative, the first rule of the derivative is the constant rule. And so for this rule, we see that any constant taking the derivative of it will be zero. So if we have, for example, f of x equals four, if we take the derivative of that, all we do is just put f prime equals zero. So any constant, four, 100, 1,000, 2,000, any number by itself with no variable is equal to zero. That's the first rule called the constant rule. The second rule that we have is the power rule. And so the power rule says that whatever we have as x, to its uh, exponent n to find the derivative is that we bring it times uh, that exponent and then we subtract it by one. So for example, if we had f of x was equal to 4x squared, the derivative of this would be f prime, right? Uh, this notation just means if you're taking the derivative of it equals, so you bring the two, so it's two, oh, let me make that better. So two is the exponent times the, the constant, 4, right? And then x, um, 2 minus, 2 minus, and then we have 1. So from this, we would get is equal to, oops, let me put it right here. This is equal to 8x, and that is the derivative of this in this case. We'll do more examples as we go forward. Our third rule for the derivative rule is the constant multiple rule. And this rule is very similar to the power rule. All we have, if we have a constant in front, we times it, bring it to the front, and minus the exponent by one. We did this for the power rule. Power rule is that um, it should not have a constant in front, but this one does for the constant multiple rule. It's, it's the exact same thing as the power rule, except we have a constant in front. So for example, if we had, Let's say f of x is equal to, oh, okay. Let me do that. Okay, so let's say f of x is equal to 3x to the seventh. So f prime, meaning we're taking the derivative. We bring the seven in front. So seven times three. We have x over here, and then we subtract it. So we have 7 minus 1. In this case, we have f prime, our derivative, is equal to 21x6. And so this is the constant multiple room. It's exactly the same thing as the power rule. Moving on to the fourth rule of the derivative rule is the sum and difference rule. And so for this rule, um, very similar to the product rule, but you have multiple. So we have h of x equals f of x plus or minus g of x. This will give us h prime of x equals f prime of x plus or minus g prime of x. So for example, if we had this, and let's say we made a, a number, maybe 4x squared, and then we could just say plus 3x cubed, right? And so just for this, take the derivative, so we put prime, we use the the power rule separately for each. Um, so this would be just be 8x. And then you could just say plus 9x squared. Okay. And that is pretty much it. That's the answer to our problem, just like that. And this is the sum of difference rule. The fifth rule is the product rule. And so for this rule, is that we have multiplication which taking the derivative will be the addition. So we have h of x is f of x times g of x will give us h prime equals f of x first, and then take the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of f of x. So for example, if we had this, I'm gonna use the same problem. If we had four x like this, just the general problem. And so we know this is multiplication because we see the parentheses, right? So then we use the product rule.
So first things first, this is f, f of x, so this goes first. You don't do anything to it. You put in parentheses. In brackets now, you would put the derivative of g of x, which is 3x cubed. So taking the derivative of 3x cubed, which will give us 9x squared. That's by the power rule. Plus g of x now, so 3 of x. Don't do anything to it. Write a regular. So let's cube. And I'll take the derivative of f of x, which is 4x squared. That is just 8x. And so when completing it, okay, I don't think we're going to have enough room for this, but if we just multiply it together, these two will combine and give us a 36x to the fourth power. And then we add it with 24x4. And so this can actually be added together, will give us a result of. 60x to the 4. And so this is the, deri the derivative of this problem. So it's just th this is just an example. Moving on to our sixth rule of the derivative rule is that we have the qu quotient rule. And this quotient rule just means a division. So if you have h of x equals to f of x of g of x. So for example, <coughs> you have this equals, let's say, uh, I'm going to use the same example, 4x squared over 3x cubed. And so the for this we would get h prime would equal would equal g of x. In this case, g of x is 3x cubed, so we just leave that as normal. And then we take the derivative of f of x. On this case, is just 4x uh, squared, and so taking the derivative would be 8x. Then subtract minus f of x, which is 4x squared, leave it normal, and then we have times it by g of x, uh, 3x cubed, take the derivative of that, which is just 9x squared. And all of this under g of x squared. So g of x in this place is 3x, 3x cubed. All we do is just square. And then you can solve it from here. But this is how you set it up. So when we look at this example, we have 3x to the 7th minus 7x cubed plus 21x squared. So from this, we can use our rules, which we can use sum of difference rule, but also the product rule for each. So we could just simply put w prime, prime as in we're taking the derivative. So taking the derivative, we can use power rule. So power rule, so 3x to the seventh, all we do bring to the seven times it by three, which is 21x, and then subtract seven from one, which gives us six. Next, we have 7x cubed. All we do here is just times it again. 3 times 7 is 21. And then we get x squared. Finally, 21x squared. Uh, 2 times 21 is 42. And minus 1 from 2 is just x. So you just subtract 1 from the exponent. We don't have any like terms, so this is our final answer. This next problem, we have example here. We have r equals 12 over x minus 4x cubed plus 1x to the fourth. And so from this, the um, best way to solve this is first flip it. So let's, you know, we don't, we're not taking the derivative just yet, but we're trying to make it easier. So let's flip it, bring the x one on top. So 12x, instead of having 1, negative 1, because you flipped it, minus 4x negative cubed plus 1. Well, actually, you could just put x to the negative fourth. Now we can take the derivative. We can use the same thing as we did last time and do the um, sum of difference rule and product rule. Now we put r prime. This tells us that we're taking the derivative. So we actually bring the exponent in front. Negative 1 times 12 is negative 12. x, we minus 1 from the exponent, which will give us a negative 2. Okay, Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12 minus an exponent from the minus one from the exponent which will give us negative four bring it down uh, negative four times one is just negative four we minus one from the exponent which is which will give us negative five there's no common denominators here so we can just add we could just leave it like this as our answer but also if we want to continue we can rewrite it as negative twelve over x to square plus 12x 
actually 12 over x to the fourth minus 4x to the fifth. Both are correct answer, but the bottom one might be better because it is how the problem was given to us. Problem was given to us in fractions, so it's better to have it in fractions. But both answers are acceptable. For our next example, we see that we have y equals 2x plus 3, 5x squared minus 4x. So both in parentheses, and then this means that we have multiplication going on, so this means we use the product rule for this. So the product rule for this, we can say y prime. Let's have y prime equal to. So you use the product rule, so we just use f of x, which is 2x plus 3. We leave that by itself. Don't change it, and then we take the derivative of g of x. In this case, this will be 10x minus 4. Okay. We add. Now we add g of x, which is 5x squared minus 4. So we don't do anything to it. Now we take the deriv derivative of f of x. So in this case, we are left with 2. Remember, we use the constant rule for the 3. There's no exponent, there's no variable, so every constant becomes 0. So basically, it's 2 plus 0 as a derivative, which is just 2 in this case. So there's, we can, from this, we can FOIL it out. We can FOIL it out, but um, there's n nothing much to do here than just foiling it out. If we do that, we can, we would have. Twenty x minus eight x plus thirty x minus twelve, and then on this side we have add addition because of this f of x square, which is ten x square minus eight x. So in this case, we see we add the like terms. 20x and 30x, let's circle them. We got these two. We also got these two. Let's add them together. 10x squared is by itself. Minus 16x. Actually, no. That is, that is minus, minus 16x. And then we also have 20x with 30x, which is 50x. 50 minus 16 is 34. So we have 34x minus 12. This is our final answer for this if we simplified it even further. For our next example, we, we see that we have a division problem. So in this case, we use the quotient rule. So we put z prime, meaning we're taking the derivative, g of x, which in this case, we'll leave it by itself, 3x squared plus x plus x. And then we take f of x, the derivative of f of x, which is, in this case, just negative 3. Then we subtract, because we're doing the quotient rule. We take g, uh, f of x, but don't do anything with it, so 4 minus 3x. And times it by the derivative of the bottom, which is just 6x plus 1 all over g of x in this case leave it by itself to the second power so what we want to do here uh, we don't foil don't foil the bottom part we leave it because it's going to cancel out we do the top multiply these two and these two so in this case we would have z prime is equal to negative nine square minus 3x minus this so let's put that in parentheses 24x plus 4 minus 18x square minus 3x and it's all over 3x square minus, minus x So z prime is now equal to 
minus 9, x squared minus 3x minus 24x, because we distributed the negative sign to all of them, 24x minus 4x plus 18x squared plus 3x. Now in this case we see and all over actually 3x minus x to the second power. We see there's common factors here. We have this and this. We also have this, this, and this, and this. Actually, as a matter of fact, that's not supposed to be a 4x. And this. So in this case, let me simplify, we get z primes equal to 9x squared minus 24x minus 4 all over 3x squared plus x to the second power. And so this is our final answer. No need to do FOIL because it's not going to help us in this case. So we could just leave it like this.